Hey everyone, David here to give you some tips on how to make your slides suck a bit less since we're all stuck on Zoom every day and slides by themselves don't cut it anymore. So let's get started. So we're going to start with a talk that I gave pre-pandemic in San Francisco in front of hundreds of people. Now you'll notice a couple things just from this image. First, I have my iPad in my hand with my Apple Pencil. And so basically what I'm doing here is I have this set up as a remote control to my keynote presentation, which is off to the side on my MacBook Pro that the AV guys have set up to this giant, you know, screen that I'm presenting on. And a second, you'll notice that my slides, you know, I'm going through the build, measure, learn loop, which I love, by the way, from Eric Ries, who wrote Lean Startup. So props, go read that book. Um, I'm taking, I'm putting my take on it in this talk, and I didn't fill in all the information right away. So tip one, you need to be able to keep people engaged and kind of fill in the information as you speak so they stay um, attentive and they're not staring at their phones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this a bit for you. And I'm actually going to do this a, a little faster than, than real time. But you'll notice how I start underlining and explaining things, right? So here I'm saying, oh, well, we want to start with learn in the build and measure learn loop. And then we want to ask some questions like, do they? And then I start describing desirability. And then I say, then I write, should we? And I start describing viability. And then I, I uh, write, can we? And I start describing feasibility. So I'm changing colors on the app and I'm writing in all caps because I'm trying to slow myself down and not completely scribble because I'm nervous on stage in front of hundreds of people. So it does take a bit of courage to live draw a bit in front of a bunch of people, but you know, you could start at your local meetups and kind of work your way up. Anyway, you'll notice how I'm going back through the loop uh, in reverse. You know, and talking about, okay, here's how you think about things first, quantitative and qualitative, the why and the what, and then you kind of work your way back to build. And then here's the kind of hook is you may not need to build anything to learn what you need to learn. And so rather than just, um, my, my, my co-author, Alex Osterwalder, rather than just performing cognitive murder, where I shove all this on screen at once, um, I choose to annotate it. And so what I find really interesting is this visual management storytelling style. And so I'm going back to, um, you know, sort of our roots of how we learn. And, and so what I'm doing here is kind of writing out things as I explain them. Now, a tip here, I have a lapel mic on, uh, or one of these little mics that are kind of on my shirt. You can see my multicolored shirt there. I have to be careful when I look down that I'm not mumbling into the mic. So I've been working on that personally. That's been tough, especially now that, you know, I'm in a, uh, I'm on Zoom all day, so I'm not necessarily practicing these, but I will have to kind of get my uh, feet underneath me, so to speak, again, when I start giving these talks again in person, uh, in that I don't mumble or, um, you know, when you write and you draw, you can have some cognitive overload. So just be careful as <laughs> soon you take some practice. But you'll notice you know, I'm going through this whole process here and look what we end up with. It's like this beautiful, well, somewhat beautiful anyway, annotated slide that when I look out to the audience, people aren't just staring at their phones. They're actually paying attention to me, which is like 90% of the battle here, folks. So what I do is I put spot part, like little pieces of information on the slide and then I layer in information in real time and draw the people in so they're coming along for the journey in the story. So this is the first example I wanted to share with you. Again, kind of pre-pandemic at a big talk in San Francisco of how I do it live on stage in front of a bunch of people using my um, iPad Pro as a remote control with Keynote with my pencil and drawing over the slides. Okay, here's another example. This one is remote with myself and my co-author Alex Osterwalder on a recent webinar about the Testing Business Ideas book that we wrote together. Now you notice here I have different circles and I'm going through the business design and testing side of the overall process of how this all fits together. And um, I didn't put everything in, so I'm going to speed this one up a bit for you just so you can see me how I'm drawing this out. But basically what I'm doing is talking through the loop and I could have had all these different animations and, and different slide build outs, but instead I just started scribbling, right? I started sketching and annotating over it. Like, hey, if you have an idea, um, it's pretty overwhelming how to make decisions on it. So first you should probably think through what's the business design side of this idea and walk through the ideation process for everything from prototyping. Uh, here I kind of ad-libbed a bit and I started sketching out some canvases, which is what we use to prototype with. And then how do you assess? 
and then work your way back through decision and then you jump over to the testing side and I draw another arrow and then I add a bit here too and I do my little assumptions mapping two by two um, I didn't go too deep into it in this side with uh, with the hypotheses and then how do you experiment and then learn and then feed that learning back into action and then I do this thing here uh, where I kind of just start scribbling over it even more <laughs> like you're going to, have to do this lots and lots and lots of times before you find something that scales and so what i wanted to show you here is a little different example and again this setup is somewhat similar except i'm not on a stage right i still have my ipad pro and my uh here in this case my imac running keynote but the same principles apply where i'm annotating over it so in this one, you can see me kind of look down a bit. You know, I have my mic in front of me. Again, similar. I have to be careful when I look down. I did really, really, really loud. You, you do have to uh, practice a bit. But basically, it, the only difference is I'm kind of sitting in front of my my screen with my, my camera pointed at me. And I'm using my iPad to draw through it that way. And so I just want to show you kind of two different examples. One of me on stage and one of me doing remote. And remote is much, much more challenging, I found. And so being able to annotate over them is, is awesome as far as keeping people involved in chat and on video with their cameras turned on, actually paying attention to you and not playing a video game on the other monitor, right? So uh, what I'm gonna do in the next bit here is show you uh, how you connect your iPad to your Keynote. It's super easy, but a lot of people overlook the functionality. So let's jump to it. Okay, the first part is just opening Keynote and you see I have one slide here, which is the title slide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going up to Keynote and I'm going to Preferences, okay? And then I'm clicking in there. And then you have General, Slideshow, Rulers, but let's like, oh, there's this remote option. What's this all about? Here is where you link it. So basically you have to make sure this is enabled. And then I already have my iPad, iPad Pro linked here, but basically you link it to your iPad Pro just to make sure they're on the same network, okay? So that's step one is going into keynote and going into remotes and enabling the remote. So let's jump over to our, our iPad Pro. So with iPad Pro, download Keynote. When you open it, you can be able to link it to your Keynote, either on your iMac or your MacBook Pro, whatever you're running Keynote on to present on. And basically, if you click up here, it becomes a remote control. And so here are my slides for today. And basically, when I click play, it's going to give me uh, view. Now you can do some really cool things. You can click here on the left and it'll give you a little slide sorter where you can jump around and jump around slide orders if you need to. But for the most part, I use this annotation. So if I click on it with my, my pencil, right, um, basically I can annotate over and around my, my slides. And what I'll tend to do is uh, if I have a, even a title slide, I'm getting ready to do a talk and people are filing into the Zoom, you know, I might write a little message like, hello, with a little smiley face or, you know, something like a cup of coffee or something or steaming tea, but whatever uh, you need to do to just keep their attention. And, and I said, in Zoom, it's so, so hard to do. And so hopefully this helps you make your slides suck a bit less and you can keep people engaged and uh, continue to be awesome. If you have other hacks to this, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks everyone.